Hi, I'm John Pratchett, and in this video, I'm going to show you my method for ISO recording vMix calls. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, especially if you find the content that I'm putting out useful. Don't forget to click the little bell icon as well so you're informed when new videos drop. So let's talk about ISOing vMix calls. Um, there's a lot of conversation going on about how we do this. As you may know, vMix calls are available from vMix, uh, raw, straight out of vMix, um, as NDI sources, which is great because that means that we now have uh, an NDI output for all of our eight vMix callers coming out of a vMix instance. So we think, well, I know what we can do. We can use some software and we can record with that. The obvious one, of course, is the built-in ISO recorder in vMix call. The other one is to use something like a piece of external software, maybe on another system like LiveMind, which is also an NDI recorder. What both these pieces of software do is they take that raw NDI feed, don't do any transcoding on it or anything like that, and just dump it to the hard drive. Um, so you're getting the raw NDI codec going straight down to a file. All well and good, works perfectly, until, of course, resolution changes, or we have frame rate changes, or something changes within that signal. And this happens, as I'm sure you're aware, a lot in vMix call. And this is the same with any application that records raw NDI. Uh, unless it can go through some kind of processing before it's recorded, it will create a new file. I'll show you, for example, even on LiveMind, which I think is brilliant. Uh, so I have a, uh, I run LiveMind as well, but on LiveMind's website, you will notice it even has a little thing on here. Oh, let's go down to where it is. There we go. Recording sources with varying format. NDI sources are captured without any transcoding or processing because of that. Whenever a recorded source changes its parameters like resolution, frame rate, or the number of audio channels, the recording is stopped and a new file is started. This can affect recordings from Skype and vMix call, which are known to change the resolution of their NDI calls. And don't we know it? Um, so where you have something that's solid and stable, it will work absolutely fine using Isocorder uh, or something like LiveMind. One way around this, of course, is we route our, ND, uh, our vMix calls through uh, the four outputs on vMix, because of course that will then process it, it will scale it, do whatever it needs to do, format convert it to whatever you set your vMix system to, so it might be 1080p30, and you'll just know that it's going to come out uh, as nice 1080p30 MP4 files, no form at all. Um, except, of course, you've only got four outputs on your vMix system, and you're almost certainly using one for your returns to your vMix core, so now you're down to three, and then you're probably streaming as well. So that's another one gone, that leaves you two. Um, and then you might be doing other things for different returns to other people. So um, instantly you can use up all those um, outputs. Another way, of course, is then we can pick it up in another vMix system, uh, and then we could process four of those through um, another four outputs onto a machine there. That will work absolutely fine. You need two vMix systems to do that. Um, I come from a hardware background. I like a little bit of hardware to help me do this. So let me show you what I like to use. I like to use Apple TVs. Uh, as you can see here, we have uh, four Apple TVs. Uh, this is connected to my network. And they are running a piece of software, which I'll show you very shortly, uh, which is made by Sienna and is an NDI viewer. And then we have an HDMI coming out of each of these to one of the four HDMI inputs on the ATEM Mini Pro ISO recorder. Now, obviously, the ISO recorder can allow us to record uh, up to five uh, simultaneous MP4 files. Um, more importantly, it will allow us to record the individual channels coming in on HDMI inputs one to four. So that's great. We've got four Apple TVs connected to that. Uh, I'm not going to go through about how we do the uh, ISO recording on the A10 Mini Pro. Uh, actually, there's a, a gentleman called Alex Petit who has a great 
uh, YouTube channel and he goes into uh, quite a bit of detail and shows you how to do that. Links in the description, go and have a look at his channel if you want to find out a bit more about the A10 Mini Pro ISO. Um, let me show you how I work with these Apple TVs. I'll show you what we've got. We have uh, a vMix session, which uh, I'm not using vMix calls at the moment. I haven't got anybody to call in. Um, so up above here, we just have uh, three little source feeds. Now I'm going to be throwing these out through the um, uh, the outputs of the uh, of vMix. Uh, these aren't vMix calls or anything or cameras, so I can't put them out raw, but the effect is going to be the same. Um, so we're going to have four channels coming out of here, and I'm just going to show you how I pick those up in the Apple TV and then how we... Um, uh, just show we'll do a resolution change and show that it will remain stable so we have um, three sources here and they are being thrown out through the let me just bring this up for you uh, external outputs here we go so I'm just routing them straight out of my four outputs here NDI is enabled as you can see we'll leave that up now as remember I have an ATEM Mini Pro and uh, at the moment the Apple TVs are not switched on so I can do that so I'm going to switch those on now I've got a little remote control that allows me to switch a socket on so those Apple TVs are now booting up um, while they're booting up I'll let you know that I set all my Apple TVs into what's known as kiosk mode you can google that but basically it means that they boot up into a single app so they don't come to the Apple TV interface they will just boot up into the Sienna NDI monitor application that we have installed. There we go. They've booted up and they've picked up the last uh, four NDI channels that we had before. Um, the beauty of it is, uh, is that we don't have to worry about having controls or anything like that uh, in order to switch them on and select the right application. So if, you, if you're just going to use them for this purpose, putting them into kiosk mode uh, you need a Mac to do it and a little piece of software um, but it's a proper uh, Apple supported um, way of doing things um, and then they just go straight into this NDI um, monitor the um, I'll let that just a second the other thing of course is being Apple is you have to buy this NDI monitor software uh, in the UK it's 99 pounds I'm suspecting it's probably similar in dollars um, but of course it's tied to your Apple ID so that Apple ID can just be used across multiple devices so if you're buying one then it's the cost of the Apple TV and the NDI monitor if you're buying any more after that it's just the cost of the Apple TV uh, you can just carry on installing the NDI monitor software as many times as you want and again, it's important that you use the version 5 Apple TV 4K. Uh, the reason being is that's the only one that has a 1 gigabit Ethernet port on it. All the rest have 100 meg, which is not very good when you're pulling in NDI sources, which are often well over 100 meg. Um, so let's go back to our... Here, well, there we go. Let's go back to here. So we have uh, our Apple TVs coming in, and you can see they've automatically picked up the last four... Uh, sources which was of course what I set up earlier so um, studio one is picking up output one studio two is picking up output two studio three is picking up output three studio four is picking up output four uh, output three and four are both the same source that's why they look the same uh, something else I would like to show you uh, while we're doing this is how we control those Apple TVs if I go over to back to this here so let me just go and refresh these. Every one of these Apple TVs will have a web interface. So as long as you know the IP addresses they get to and I fix all mine, uh, you now have control of whatever uh, sources you want. So for example, here we go. Uh, here's all the sources on here. And if I wanted to change uh, number three, to, let's say I've got a lot of sources on here. Let's say we want you to change number three to the clock as well. I can click that, click save. Let's just flick back to the multi view, and there we go. We can see it. Uh, I'm now going back into that list and I'm going to go and select output three and hit save. There we go. And you can see it flicks back. So it's a very simple way that. You know, if you can't get access to the Apple TVs, you know they're booted straight into um, Sienna's um, NDI monitor. You know you've got a web interface for it. You can just remotely select whatever source you want. 
And the beauty of it is, of course, that these Apple TVs have basically format converted whatever's coming in to whatever output resolution you set on your Apple TV. So mine are currently set to 1080p 60. No matter what goes into those Apple TVs is going to come out at 1080p 60. So how does it deal with a resolution change, for example, uh, which is the only thing I can really demonstrate here for you, but uh, we'll do that. Let's just go over to here. Uh, a quick and simple way of doing that is on my vMix machine that I've got coming, uh, this one here, uh, you can see that I've got all my outputs. If I go to output four, so that's the one that's currently showing in program on uh, the A10 Mini Multiview. Uh, if I go into the settings on that, I can just force this to 720p. So I'm gonna force that to 720p and click on OK and click on OK, how will it like it? Uh, didn't really show anything, did it? Um, now, how do we know we've done that? Maybe I was faking it. I'll tell you what, let's go to my vMix machine. I've got it coming in here. It's just a very quick way of showing you. Um, if I go to, here's the source, 720p, 1280 by 720p, just there. So click on it again, so you can see, 1280, 720. Let me go back up to vmix that's sending that out go into my outputs change that to 1080 click on ok there we go and now if i go back to my vmix system here click on that and then now you can see there it is 1920 1080 um, and as far as the apple tv is concerned there is no issues whatsoever it just carries on working and you will get yourself a consistently solid result coming out of that onto your file. So that's one way that I ISO record my vMix calls. Hopefully you found that of use to you. Uh, if you did, please subscribe. Uh, if you didn't, please subscribe anyway because the next one may be of use to you. Um, there'll be plenty of videos coming out over the next few weeks. Once again, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, stick them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you very much.